Hello everyone, welcome back on another video on DSP processor. In this video, we are going to learn about GPIO pins for F2A3790. How can we configure the GPIO pin for particular applications? Because the particular pin can be connected with a general purpose input output and that can be connected as uh, different peripherals. And uh, at the end, we will look at uh, how that pin can be connected with a CPU1 and a CPU2 for uh, such kind of dual core processor. So the basic objective for this video will be get familiar about GPIO pins and how that single GPIO pin can be connected with the multiple peripherals and what are the registers uh, can be used, what are the registers used for the selection of the GPIO pins. Further we will see about the input qualifications where the signal noise can be eliminated using the qualification of the signals. And at the end we will look at the CPU1 and CPU2 how they are configured uh, for the particular pin so this is the architecture of the gpio pins and where gpio are grouped into different ports so f2 at 790 is having uh, 192 gpio pins and the gpio pins are uh, connected with the different ports and uh, and divided into different ports and these ports are port a port b c d e and f so 192 pins are divide into these ports and each port is having 32 pins and how the 32 pins are divided for the port that is with the help of mux muxing registers so it is divided by mux1 and mux2 and g mux1 and g mux2 so that is done with a different uh, group of registers so here you can see uh, there is the GPIO port that is connected with the input qualification and that is going to the uh, direction registers and further that is connected with a uh, GPIO port a max one registers and uh, further it is connected with the GPIO port a group max one registers so you can see it is a bi-directional so it can be considered as an input port and output port and the qualifications can be done for the input ports only so the qualifications meaning we want to if we are considering any GPIO pin as the input pins, then it can it can be having uh, the noise to therefore to eliminate the noise, uh, the qualifications can be done. So it this GPA directions pin will decide the what are the directions whether we want to use that pin as an input pin and an output pin. So and uh, further that particular pin can be grouping with the help of MUX control registers. So it is having total six port port A to F and each port is having 32 pins so it is having the port A is having GPIO 0 to 32 pins are connected with the port A and the port F it is connected with a 160 to 190 GPIO 91 GPIO pins and it is having 4 GPIO index multiplier so these are the index multiplier and that will decide the what pin and what purpose we are using and that whether that pin is con connected as a GPIO pin and that pin can be connected as a peripherals and uh, EPW hum and communications and uh, therefore these multiplier can be used uh, to uh, can be help us to use the particular pin for up to 12 independent peripheral signals and digital input output pins further the output pin can be controlled either by the cpu one and so here this output pin is connected and this output pin is controlled uh, with the cpu1 cpu1.cla cpu2 and cpu2.cla so the output pin can be connected with any kind of the cpu and uh, the pin assignment and peripheral muxing and cpu muxing can be done only with the cpu1 then how the single gpio pin is connected with the multiple peripherals so this is sh shown a complete architecture of the single GPIO pin and the single GPIO pin is connected with the different peripherals and that is connected with uh, some kind of some set of registers so here for example if you want to use the single GPIO pin as an input port so so this is input part and here GP invert will be used to help to invert the inputs so for example here you are getting the this kind of inputs and here when you are using this signals you will get uh, this kind of signals so it will help such to use the invert the signals and further qualifications can be done for the input signals to eliminate the unwanted noise and that can be feed with this path and uh, going to this it is correctly connected with the peripherals okay 
so there is another path which is, uh, which we can consider here when the input qualification is done it can be go through this path and uh, by selecting this register and the this mux selector registers we can configure we can connect the gpio pin with a peripheral pin so when for example when we are con connecting when we are considering uh, when we are using gpio 0 and that is with a uh, mux 1 and it is connected with the port a so here we have to write instead of x we have to write a and uh, here it will be gpa mux 1 and here it will be gpa max 1 so if we are considering this pin as 0 0 that means the path will be like this and that will be connected with this uh, peripheral interface and when we are connecting this as a 0 1 when we are doing this as a 0 1 then this path is connected with the peripheral one so the single GPIO pin can be connected with the peripheral one and uh, the peripheral one can be um, pre-specified and we will see there will be one table where all the peripherals are connected uh, how the peripheral one two three uh, depending upon the selection of the uh, index registers so this is the complete architecture for how the single GPIO pin can be connected with the multiple peripherals so how that can be connected and that can be configured with the help of these registers so what are these registers and how they are used uh, while writing the programming so there are different set of registers as a gp uh, a mux as we have already discussed the this will decide the which uh, the particular pin uh, can be connected with the different peripherals and how they are connecting so these two mux uh, indexing registers indexing mux registers will decide where we want to connect the particular gpio pins so there will be two set of muxing registers and it is having the qualifications so this is the qualification registers and this will decide uh, whether we want to qualify the input signal and uh, we want to qualify we want to take a sample based qualifications for the input signals so if we want to go for the more qualifications you can see the lecture uh, given the icon below icon above so next is the direction registers this direction register will decide whether we want to use the Mm, that particular pin as an input pin and the particular pin as an output pin so when we are uh, assigning the spin as a uh, one then we are using the pin as an output pin and uh, when we are using this pin as one zero then we are using the spin as an input pin and there will be data registers so how to drive the data on a particular gpio pins and either we want to make the particular gpio pin as one we want to make a zero and we want to make a toggle there will be another control set of registers gpx control set of registers and that will be uh, control the qualifications and it will do the multiple functionality instead other than the qualifications it will uh, control the uh, different uh, different uh, options it is having a different options so it is having gpx inversion so whatever input signal we are giving and that can be inverted with the help of this set of inverter registers it is having the pull up disabled registers as you can see here so these are the architecture for the GPIO pins where this input pin can be considered as a general purpose input output pin and that can be configured uh, that can be configured to connect the peripherals. So this is having a lot of registers as you can see here. So when we are using this pin as input pin and the path will be following this one and that pin connected with the peripherals. And when we are using this pin as output pin then the, uh, these peripherals uh, and the GPIO pins can be connected with this one. So for example if you want to use this pin as input pin and by selecting the cp inverting what can you get you will get the inversion of the output at these positions and after getting this one what you can do you can do the input qualifications that uh, unwanted noise you can eliminate from this input signals and further uh, you can uh, further the cpu one and all the gpio pins can be configured with the cpu one cpu two cpu one dot cla cpu two dot cla so for example if you want to use the uh, gpio 0 and that you want to use for the cpu 1 then what you have to use you have to use code selection register so this is the code selection register that will decide which pin you want to use for uh, which cpu so for example if you want to use this gpio pins what you can do you can use the cpa c 
SEL1. So this will select pin number 0 to 7 and all the pins can be configured uh, and that can be connected with the CPU1. If you want to use for uh, pin number uh, different pins, you, 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 can, you can change these pins. So by configuring the, this core selection register, we can decide the particular pin can be connected with the CPU1 and that can be configured with the CPU2, CPU1.CLA, CPU2.CLA. And further, this MUX control registers is selected which pins we want to use as a GPIO and which pin we can use uh, as a peripheral interfacing. And the peripherals could be uh, EPWM, ADC, DAG and communication channels. So this is having the control set of registers and a data set of register for the f 283790 So the control set of register is having GPX control registers qualification selection registers, MUX registers, direction registers, product disable registers, polarity invert registers, peripheral group MUX1 and peripheral group MUX2 and this is the core selections with which core we want to use it and these are the data registers. So this is the GPIO table from this table by selecting the index registers so these are the index registers uh, in the MUX, MUX control registers and based upon the MUX control registers we can select which pin is configured as a GPIO and which pin configured as a EPWM, CAN, ECAP and for the communication purpose so single pin can be considered as for the different purpose so for example if you want to use a GPIO 6 pin and we can use that pin as a EPWM we can use for uh, for the output X bar we can use for the synchronous output ECAP and we can use for CAN transmission okay so how can we configure it so it is having two bits so it will be having uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 so 12 30 bits uh, is uh, connected with a GPAG max and GPA max so we have considered GPAG max. So this is the GPAG max, and this is the GPA max. So here GPAG max, and it is having GPA max. So when we are considering this group register as a group register is zero zero, and this is the zero zero, then we can use that pin as a GPIO pins. When we are considering the group register is zero zero and max register is the zero one then we can use that pin as, as epwm pin and the tabular form like when we are considering zero zero and is one zero then we can use that pin as a output x bar so based upon the uh, this table we can select the particular pin uh, by selecting the um, index registers max registers we can use the particular pin functionality for different purpose so if we have resolved gpio mux configuration that is not mapped so to either a peripheral or the gpio mode the state of the pin will be undefined and the pin may be driven unimplemented configuration are for future expenses and must not be selected that you have to take care of and here the different set of registers a different set of gpio pins here you can see here gpio uh, 21 to 41 and that can be used for different purpose here the 42 to 60 so there are several pins uh, up to 192 pins are configured and that can be configured for the different purpose so for this is the input qualifications uh, for example you are using that pin for the input and uh, that input is having the noise this kind of noise is having so what can we do we can pass uh, that pin with the input qualifications and with the help of CPU clocks so that output can be as you can see it will be like this so the input qualification used to filter out the noise and unwanted noise from the input signals so that is the purpose of the qualifications if you want to know more about the qualifications you can see the video on the top of the icon so these are the different set of registers so uh, gpa control registers so that is used for the qualification sampling period so this is for the different qualifications and uh, that qualification when we are selecting this pin as 00, zero for example we are using this one and uh, qualification ptprd v0 that means we are not qualifying the signals and when we are using this pin as 0x01 that means we are qualifying by uh, two, uh, 
so this is the way where we can qualify the signals so here uh, qualification selection registers so gpa qualification selection registers so it will qualify the gpio a qualify select registers from port number 0 to 15 so this is the gpio and is having the two bits every pins are with two bits and how can we qualify it when we are keeping this pin as 00, zero that means we are synchronized with the system clock output when we are keeping this pin as 01 that means we are qualifying for the three samples when we are keeping 10 we are qualifying for the six samples and when this we are keeping this one that means uh, there won't be any qualifications and that is done for the different peripherals so peripherals which we are connecting with a particular pins that are not qualified because uh, they are asynchronous in the nature for the synchronizations uh, we, we are want to qualify the signals for asynchronous we do not we do not have to qualify the signals so the same thing can be done with a gpi qualification selection registers from 16 to 31 and this will be followed for all the gpi pins here now the max control register as you can see here this is the max registers and that will be gpio a max one registers and that is for port 0 to 15 it defines the pin maxing selection for the gpio and when we are using this one we have to define the group registers also so and why here why is the port number so we are having port a b c d e and f and n is the max one and two and z is the zero two this is the pin number zero one two three four five so here when we are deciding using this one we have first select the this group registers and this is the peripheral group max registers and it defines the pin maxing selection for the gpio and for complete pin selection maxing we have to decide on gpio x we have to configure this okay so for particular pin we have to configure this max registers and we have to configure this peripheral group registers so here this is for the max one and the same thing for remaining pins 16 to 31 that is the max 2 is connected so this thing same thing can happen for all the pins uh, for uh, the microcontroller so this it is the directions registers so it will decide whether the particular pin can be used as an input pin and output pin so we can configure this pin as by selecting zero and one when we are selecting zero that pin can be considered as an input and when we are selecting as one that's been configured as output and there will be pull up disable registers when we are considering this pin as zero then pin b we are enabling the pull up and when we are keeping this pin as one then we are disabling the pull up and uh, this is the inward polarity inward registers and when we are selecting this pin as this register is zero then we are selecting the non inverted gpio inputs and when we are considering this pin as one then we are selecting the invert so now till now we have seen the gpio pins then how the gpio pins can be connected with the cpu1 cpu2 cpu3 and cpu4 so that is there is a once control set of registers is available for the 283790 that uh, that is the core selection registers and these registers will decide that how can we select the cpu1 cpu2 cpu3 cpu4 for example when we are doing this pin as 0x 0gp csel1 that means we are configuring all the pins and when we are keeping this as 00 xx00 that means we are configuring all the pins and that can be controlled with a cpu1 next if instead of 01 we if we keep that is 01 instead of 00 if we keep 01 then we are controlled the all the pins these pins with the help with cpu1.cla and the same thing can be happens when we are initializing one zero and one one that pin can be controlled with the cpu2 and cpu2.cla and that is for where x is the port number it will be a to f 
so it can be done for the all the pin and that each pin can be controlled individually so same thing can be done with the help with different controls uh, selection register core selection registers so once you have selected all the registers or all the registers you can lock the registers using the gp lock registers so we have already told about this so it is having different control registers and the data registers so this is the qualification registers for different port a port b port selections one b port quali qualification selections two c port as you can see here d port e port f port here are control registers direction registers pull up registers invert polarity invert registers lock registers CR registers, MUX registers, GMUX registers, and data registers. So these are the registers that is used for the particular GPIO pins, and that can be used either for a uh, general purpose input output pins and then different peripherals. So now, how can we connect it? Uh, for uh, well, when we are writing the code uh, in this com code composite studio, how can we use it? So here you can see here. We have considered the GPX control registers, and this control register will be used to qualify all the input. And uh, so it is quite it is used to qualify all the input from 0 to 31 pins. And here it is the qualification selections one and the qualification selections two, and it is giving the directions and pull-up registers. So here uh, core selection register you can see here core selection register for 0 to 7, uh, 8 to 15, 16 to uh, 20. 16 to 23 and 23 to uh, 31 so all the pins are connected with a cpu one so we have selected the all the pins as a cpu one now we want to use a pin number 18 and a pin number 34 so pin number 18 is connected with the port a right and that is further connected with a mux 2 whereas pin number 34 is connected with a port b and that is connected with a mux 1 so here pin number 18 is connected with a port a and that is connected with a mux 2 and so this will decide the mux control registers and uh, grouping is done that is selections for the port pin number 18 and 34 bit is connected with the port b and the mux 1 so as you can see here so now uh, we want to use a pin as an output pin and then we want to connect that pin as a LED so how can we use it so we have to configure we have to decide the directions for the pin so the directions for the 34 number pin we are making the direction is 1 that means that pin can be used configured as an output pin and uh, we want to drive the LED we want to make a LED on so the 32 bit we are making the data on that pin is make is 1 so one means we are setting that means uh, the led will be turned on during that time similarly for 19 pin is connected with a we are making is a directions one and that is we are making the led on in that pin and the directions for the 18 pins uh, we are making that is one and so this is the different pin configurations how how we can do the config different pin configurations so here uh, for gpio 32 pins we are selecting uh, that bit from the we want to use the gpio 32 pin with a cpu2 so how can we configure so by selecting this selection bit of registers either we can go for 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 that means when we are selecting this as a 2 then we can use that particular number of pin with a cpu2 and when we are using here one then we can uh, use that pin with a cpu1 dot cla and the direction is decided and further we are making that 31 bin at set so we can uh, turn on the led so this is how we are configuring the gpio pins and uh, how we are selecting the particular gpio pin for the different purpose and how we are selecting the core dual core for dual core processor so if you have any query regarding this you can comment me on the comment section and don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel thank you thank you very much